Grace is his unmerited favor. favor. Yes. Once you accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, Savior. grace is something that allows you to continue to walk this thing out. And when you find yourself falling, grace does not condemn you. See, I need you to hear this. God is never going to speak to you and tell you how bad you are. Come on. That's one of the ways to know whether it's your voice or Satan's voice that's talking to you. Come on. When you start hearing things like, you fail, you're bad, you're horrible, you're never going to be nothing. All of those are contrary to the word of God. That's right. That's right. God's voice does this. It convicts you and makes you say, you know what? I know I'm in the pigs, Amen. but I ain't supposed to be. My God. And I may not have enough strength to get up. My God. I may not have enough strength to get up now, but I know I ain't supposed to be. And say, that's how. God will start to operate on the inside of the believer. And before you know it, you're able to turn your head up and say, you know what? I'm coming to myself and I'm getting up out of this. Stop hanging around people that are condemning you all the time. The word of God is not there to condemn you. It's there to convict you. Somebody say convict. Convict. Conviction is just a standard. So as a believer, this is what happens. You walk and you're doing something and you fall, you get convicted because you realize you just went beneath the standard. Amen. You just went beneath what you know God has said concerning you. So sin is not always this demonstrative thing that happens. Sin by definition, is to miss the mark. So sometimes we see it just in what we're saying. Anytime you are saying something different than what God has said about you, you miss the mark. Anytime you're talking about how sick you are, what you're saying is, I'm not walking in divine hell. Now, it takes a lot in order for you to be fortified at a point where you can start saying what God has said concerning you. But until you recognize the fact that what you're saying is not right, you're not going to be able to make the pivot. So most of us just hang out in a place and we think it's okay. And we don't understand why that part of our life God is never able to deal with us in. But here are these four leopard men. They're hanging out at the gate. Somebody say the gate. And the Bible doesn't give us an indication of how long they've been there, but the fact that they all had full-blown leprosy, like it's AIDS or something, full-blown leprosy, they were hanging out long enough to start to talk. And they said, you know what? There is an army inside the city. And if we go in there, they might kill us. But one of them said this to them. See, this is the reason sometimes you've got to be the voice of reason. He said, verse 3, And there were four leprous men at the entering end of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Which means we have leprosy, and where we are right now, we're going to die no matter what. Because this is a progressive disease that does not get any better. It's irreversible. So leprosy is going to equate to death. They knew where they were if they stayed there that death was going to be inevitable. Verse number four, he says, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. So one of them is talking now. He said, you know what? There's a famine going on in the city. So if we go into the city, there is nothing to eat so we can die there. Are you with me? So that they're dialoguing with each other now. They said, if we sit here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, we're going to die. Then he says, now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall up but die. So they have started to dialogue and realize that if we stay here, we're sure we're going to die. 
But if we're willing to do something different, possibly something different can happen in my life. Yes. See, uh, it's important that as a believer, we get to the place where we realize that what we're doing is not working. And if we continue to do it the way that we've done it, it's going to continue to not work. Are you, are you all with me? Mm -hmm. There are clear indications that where you are right now is a direct result of the small decisions that you've made along the way. Amen. So unless you change how you make your decisions, you're not going to change the pathway that you're going down. That's why becoming an avid Bible reader becomes important. Because in the word of God itself is a wisdom that causes you to be able to make better decisions. And James says it like this. He says, if you ask for wisdom, I'll give it liberally. You know what that means? He said, I upbraid it not. I won't even hold it back from you if all you do is ask for wisdom. Isn't that amazing? That all he says is, if you ask for it, I'll give it. Wow. How many of us make decisions on a regular basis and we don't even ask God for wisdom concerning it? Wow. We don't even seek God on what's wise concerning this. That's right. Because, see, just because it sounds good or it looks good doesn't mean it's wise. The Bible says everything that's lawful is not expedient. Let me give you an example. God's voice is from everlasting to everlasting. And he's always speaking. Somebody say always speaking. Always speaking. But just because you heard it now don't mean you ought to necessarily move now. All right. That's good. Okay. Are you with me? Absolutely. Which means you may, through prophecy or through the word of God or hearing his voice, he may tell you that he's going to bless you with a business. Come on. But you don't even have a business plan yet. <laughs> but you think, because he said, I'm going to bless you with a business, that tomorrow you wake up and you launch a business. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Because God's math is 4 equals 2 plus 2. For us, 2 plus 2 is 4. So when you hear God's going to bless me with a business, your next prayer should be, God, what's the wisdom? That's right. To walk this thing out that you've given me. Because without wisdom, you're going to put yourself in a position where you're going to have egg on your face. Mm. And you're going to be continually disappointed. And you know, this is what's amazing. We'll blame it on God. And we make God look like he's an absolute clown. Mm. <clears throat> because you say God said he gave you a business. Mm. 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 But because you didn't pray for wisdom, you just try to walk something out and you look like a clown. Mm. 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 And the people around you know that you look like a clown. Mm. 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 And the people that aren't saved don't want nothing to do with the God you're talking about because they know you look like a client. Mm, That's right. Mm, mm. But all you got to do is ask for wisdom. Solomon, which was the richest man in the world, you start reading the dialogue and all he asked for was wisdom. He didn't ask for more money. You know why? Because he realized wisdom creates a level of wealth that's going to cause him to leave an inheritance for his children's children and nobody connected to his genealogy would ever have to want for anything. Wisdom does that. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is the principal thing. It's time out for us just making decisions because we get information. Mm, that's good. Information is knowledge. Somebody say knowledge. knowledge. Wisdom is how you use the knowledge that you now have. Once we start operating at a level of wisdom, the first thing it's going to do is going to change our circles. That's right. Yes. Yes. Mm. It's going to change the people that we're hanging around. Because contrary to popular belief, where you, the people you're hanging around right now, they're either 
good for you or they're bad for you. That's it. The people that you talk to the most on your cell phone, the top five people, either they're good for you or they're bad for you. That's right. But these men now were in a position where they're talking and they're dialoguing. And they realize that if we stay here, we're going to die without a doubt. And if we go in, we possibly may die. But see, what they realize is we have to do something desperately different if we want to desperately change. And see, I don't know about you, but there were some places in my life where I realized mm -hmm. I was desperate my for change. God, yes. Yes. God, I don't want things to continue to look like this anymore. That's right. I'm tired of the pain that's associated with these diseases. Yes. Yes. I'm tired of the lack that's associated with these decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm tired of the despair that's associated with these decisions. See, Satan cannot put you in a position where you can't pay your bills. Come on. Your decisions put you in a position where you can't pay your bills. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> it's real talk. Isn't that something? It, but it's so much easier to say, Satan. <laughs> Satan. Who's <laughs> Satan? <laughs> it's so much easier to blame it on him yes. mm -hmm. than it is, I just was not wise. Jesus. Yes. Right. Yeah, I didn't really pray. Mm -hmm. Before I sign the lease on something I can't afford. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really didn't seek God before I made this decision. What I did was I made the decision and then I wanted God to get me out of it. Right. Wow, yes. Isn't that something? Yes, it is. We don't seek him on the front end. Okay? So because we don't seek him on the front end, then we need miracles. And you've heard me say this before. Miracles are not supposed to be where the believer lives. You always need some supernatural to happen for you. Really? <laughs> miracles are designed for the unbelievers. The Bible says signs and wonders follow them. That yes. Thank you, but it's amazing how many of us as Christians put ourselves in a position where we're always needing something supernatural. If you had eight months straight where you had been able to pay your bills, you need to do what's called downsizing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Period. Right. Yeah, you, uh, corporate America get it. They downsize, they, they lay off, that's they right. cut back. But it's amazing, in our own households, we won't oh, make the necessary adjustments. My God. And then we continue to have self-inflected stress over and over and my over and over again. My God. Instead of just understanding, if it happened for eight months straight, unless you make decisions differently, it's going to happen the next eight months That's the same way. Amen. Exactly. Right. Then what happens is because you're stressed, listen to this, it's been proven that 90% of all illnesses is connected to stress. So, because you're stressed, everything else around you starts to suffer. Mm. Your relationship. Right. How you're able to interact with people. Your health. All because you were wise in the beginning. True. I know that's real hard. Mm -hmm. Real hard to admit. But I, I know what not walking in wisdom looks like. Right. Yes, yes. And it led me down a path where God was getting no glory out of my life. And I was bearing no fruit in certain areas. Now, the reason why fruit becomes important is John 15 says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Whoa. We believe that being his disciples has everything to do with what we do on Sundays. And he said, you glorify me when you bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. So shall you be my disciples. Mm -hmm. So I in the world, I'm going to 